We're now going to discuss the church of Santa Madalene in Vesale. But what is of particular interest to art historians is the tympana of the, the central tympana of the narthex. Actually, there are three tympana in the narthex, and they were originally on the west facade. Uh, they've built a narthex over it, which has protected it from the weather. This one in the center is of particular interest. There have been a number of articles written about it, and I put two of the articles up for you to read, uh, if you choose to do so. Uh, Katz and Ellenbogen's written in, uh, published in 1944, and Taylor's in uh, 1980. And I'll talk to you a little bit about it. One of the controversies surrounding this is what is the subject? Uh, as you can see, it was built uh, the, it was carved in 1120 to 1132, and the subject has been called a number of things. It's been called an ascension. Katz and Nellenbogen called it a mission of the apostles. Taylor called it a, dis, a Pentecost, or descent of the Holy Spirit. So we want to discuss those and talk about what they mean. Um, I guess I'll do chronologically. Uh, an ascension is when Christ is going up into heaven. Forty days after the resurrection, uh, Christ gathered with his apostles on Mount Olivet, and he ascended into heaven. Now, that's told in Acts 1. But before he left, he told them several things. He told them that they would go out and preach to all the world, which is known as the mission of the apostles. It's also mentioned in Matthew 28. And he also told them to stay in Jerusalem because they would receive a comforter and they would be given the power uh, by the Holy Spirit. So they remained in Jerusalem for another 40 days. And on the Feast of the Pentecost, the Pentecost is a Jewish feast, and it was, they were celebrating this, when they received the descent of the Holy Spirit. And they were able to speak with tongues. Uh, and this just wasn't just babbling. Uh, at first people thought they were. They said, oh, you're drunk. And suddenly people realized that they could understand the languages. Uh, people had gathered from all over the world uh, to celebrate Pentecost in Jerusalem. And people said, well, that's my language they're speaking. So they were given the gift to be able to speak in many different languages so that they could go out and preach the gospel to all the world. So you can see how these three themes, the Ascension, the Mission of the Apostles, and the Pentecost are all tied together. And it doesn't really look like an Ascension to be perfectly frank. Christ is in the center, the Apostles are around him on either side, but none of the other uh, motifs that we associate with the Ascension are present. Uh, we don't see the uh, angels who are uh, speaking to the apostles. We don't see angels taking Christ up into heaven. Uh, so Katz and Ellen Vogan rightly said, you know, maybe it's not just an Ascension. And he suggested that idea of the mission of the apostles, which in a way would combine the fact that Christ is there among the apostles, the ascension, with giving them the mission. And that mission is related to what we'll see, and I'll show you some details uh, uh, fairly soon, um, in the archivolts. And on the lintel, there are carved uh, different peoples of the world. And they're quite interesting. Nellenbogen also associated this with the Crusades because the Crusades uh, were considered to be another mission of the Apostles. In this case, the mission was to convert the infidel by the sword. If you didn't convert, you could die. Um, but uh, they seemed to think that was quite legitimate in the uh, late 11th and early 12th centuries. And as we said, uh, St. Bernard did preach from this church, and he stood on the steps of it, and uh, Catherine Mellon-Ogan uh, lets us imagine Bernard pointing up to the great Christ here uh, in the tympana and saying, He wills it! He wills it! Go out on crusade! How did 
does this relate to the descent of the Holy Spirit? Um, Taylor pointed out that it really doesn't look like an ascension. It looks much more like a descent of the Holy Spirit. Uh, but what seems to have confused people uh, were the presence of Christ. And that's very easily accounted for. We may remember that uh, in my PowerPoint for the Utrecht Psalter, I had uh, some fairly complicated uh, theology about the Philo K controversy. And I said at that point, I wasn't going to require people to know it uh, at that point. But at this point, we really have to recognize, uh, recognize the iconography that's related to that. And uh, so I need to explain it again and uh, point out how this works with the tympana at Basile. I'll tell you something fun, though. Um, I had realized this, that uh, it really did fit. And I was thinking, oh, someday I have to write a paper on it. When I, f when I located the uh, paper uh, by Taylor, which had been published a few years before, and oh, well, someone else had already done it. At any rate, um, reminding you of the Philoke controversy and the Nicene Creed, going back to one of the earliest Christian creeds established at the Council, the first Christian uh, church council, the Council of Nicaea. And in the Nicene Creed, it has the uh, words uh, that the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father, God the Father. Now, at a slightly later conference, the Western Church added a word. And the word was philoke, which is Latin for and the son. Philo is son. K makes it and. Uh, so uh, the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son. This is known as the double procession of the Holy Spirit. And it was extremely controversial. Uh, even in the West, uh, there were times when uh, people simply just left it out because they knew how controversial it was. But more and more the Western Church came to insist that the Holy Spirit came not only from God the Father but also from God the Son, Christ. The Eastern Church, on the other hand, uh, was adamantly opposed to this. Uh, and it is one of the major uh, doctrinal controversies that led to the split in the church between the Western Church, which became what we today would call the Roman Catholic Church, and the Eastern Church, which is the Orthodox Church. So in the Western Church, they continued to add, and they still do to this day, add the words philoke uh, to the Nicene Creed or since it's usually translated into vernacular in English, we would say the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and from the Son. Now, what does this have to do with the iconography of the Pentecost? Uh, I'm showing you a picture of a Romanesque uh, manuscript. You don't need to know it. Uh, but it's showing you the Pentecost, or the descent of the Holy Spirit. And you can see the Holy Spirit, who is represented symbolically as a dove. And the reason for that, of course, is that during the baptism of Christ, uh, the Gospel says that the Holy Spirit descended as a dove. Uh, presumably it's a metaphor, uh, but it uh, was used as a symbolic image so that the, we talk about the dove of the Holy Spirit. So we see this uh, bird, this dove, uh, descending, uh, coming straight down toward the apostles who are gathered below. And there are rays coming from his beak. And the rays end, uh, they look almost like extended torches because they end in little flames. Well, this is one way to show uh, the Pentecost. Uh, rays coming out. And it says in the Bible uh, that uh, the rays were that the Holy Spirit descended uh, as fiery tongues. So sometimes you'll see a Pentecost where you have little flames coming out of the top of each apostle's head. Uh, so that's one way to show it. But here's another way of showing the descent from the Holy Spirit. And this is particularly interesting and relevant because it's in an early 12th century Cluniac manuscript. And although 
Uh, La Madeleine was not a Cluniac foundation. Remember that the Cluniac order and uh, the, the very, very large and powerful monastery church at Cluny uh, was just very, very influential in Burgundy, of course, and really throughout uh, France. So here we're looking at a Cluniac manuscript, and it's showing the descent from the ho uh, the descent of the Holy Spirit, but it doesn't even show the Holy Spirit. There's no dove. What it does represent is Christ, and Christ is shown at the top. It's a half-length figure in a mandorla, and it with a halo that has a cross in it, and that's how we can be sure it's Christ. And from Christ are coming rays, and the rays descend to the apostles who are gathered below, and you say St. Peter right in the center. So this is a very visual uh, expression of the philoke uh, clause that says that the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Son, from Jesus. And you have the rays going from Christ to the apostles. Now this is very similar in a way with what we see with uh, La Madeleine and the tympana over the central portal. We see Christ in the center, his hands are outstretched, and there are rays descending from his hands, and they're stretched out to the apostles. Now in some places they are broken, but uh, you can, there are enough of them surviving so that you can see that the rays are going uh, right to the apostles. So, according to Taylor, and I would agree with this, uh, we do have a rendition of the descent of the Holy Spirit with Christ, the Son, uh, so that the Holy Spirit is proceeding from the Son. Now, we said that the mission of the apostles was con to convert all the world. Uh, and that would include all of the people of the world. Now, during the Middle Ages, they hadn't traveled everywhere. And some of the stories that uh, did come back from travelers were very strange. Uh, and they thought that there were all sorts of people uh, with many different features all over the world. Uh, sometimes we can sort of tie them in with what they might be. For example, we see on the lintel at Vesele a little man who's climbing up a ladder to get on his horse because he's so short. He needs a ladder to get up on the, on the horse. Well, this is a pygmy. I go, pygmies don't have horses. But the idea is they'd heard about these little tiny people, and so one way to show it was to show how short they were was, oh, we need a ladder. We can't get on our horse without a ladder. There are other uh, very strange people here, uh, people who seem to uh, have giant ears, for example. And uh, if you look now at the image in the top left and uh, the really pretty much in the center of the screen, uh, the right side of the, the top left, you'll see a dog-headed man. And down below that, you see uh, pagans bringing animals for sacrifice. And then the larger image are the pig-snouted Ethiopians. And yes, that's what they said. They thought that in Ethiopia there dwelt people who had pig snouts. I guess they were Tellarites. Uh, I want you also, since you can see a nice detail here, is notice how lively the carving is. The people seem a little bit tubular. They've got big heads, uh, as well as big noses, uh, and big gestures. Uh, but look what fun the artist is having, essentially, with the draperies, which sort of whip around, uh, and uh, he's used uh, sort of uh, grooves and uh, ridges. Uh, sometimes they're grouped together uh, to create these uh, drapery folds, and we'll uh, take greater...